Today's video is a little bit of a different video for me because I'm going to be looking at my spending habits and trying to maybe even create a budget of sorts. Stay tuned to see how this turns out. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Tracy and I am a girl with plans. So if you've seen my channel before, um, you know that I do track my spending. I track it by category. And then at the end of the month, I total everything up to see how much I have spent on groceries, um, craft supplies, essentials, non-essentials, things like that. Um, that has been working well for me. The past few months have been pretty scary to see how much I've actually spent on crafting and planner supplies. <laughs> um, I have made quite a few purchases from Timu. I've also made uh, several purchases from uh, planner shops because, you know, new planner season is upon us and I just have not been able to say no. I'm like, um, might as well try it. So I have been making a lot of purchases here lately. I'm not sure if setting up this budget is going to change that. I hope it will. But what I really want to do is kind of break down all of my monthly expenses when it comes to my essential bills, my non-essential bills, which are like streaming, <laughs> memberships, any other types of subscriptions. Um, and then like non-essential but kind of necessary expenses and then non-essential really not necessary expenses. I want to kind of look at all of that and maybe even leave this video having a budget. We'll see. We'll see. No promises will be made. So I do have a few things here which if you caught my Frank and Planner setup I did show you how I do use these in my current um finance section of my Franken planner. Basically, I created these two documents on Canva. There was a template and then I kind of customized the template to fit my needs because I wanted to keep a three year history or breakdown of my electric bill and my water bill. The water bill, the reason why I do the water bill is because a lot of times like if you have like a leak that you don't know about <laughs> it's this is like where you're gonna find out about it is in your water bill like for example this um my new my latest water bill was like 72 dollars i'm like 72 dollars i'm like that sounds like that went up so but then i looked and like last year was only 70 so i mean it was 70 so it pretty much has not gone up because all of this year everything went up by a dollar or two so no leaks um, but that's pretty much the purpose of that because if I see something jump really high, then I know that there might be an issue. Um, but for budgeting purposes, water and things are usually pretty much um, the same. My electric bill does change. And this is, I do use this to kind of, I put budget in quotes, um, budget for the upcoming months because I can look back at my 2023 and then kind of budget a little bit for how much my electric bill may be in 2024 or, you know, winter 2025. So I will be kind of using that to come up with some estimates. I also have a subscription reminder. I need to update this because I have a lot of scratch throughs when subscriptions have been canceled. But I have this and I didn't have everything on here because I actually just got hit with a credit card annual fee renewal and it's a credit card I wasn't using. Fortunately, if you just call them and cancel it, you'll get refunded for it, especially if it just happened. So I was able to save that $99 because I have not used that credit card since I opened it. Um, <laughs> I opened it for the points and then just never used. I think last year I did pay the $99 fee because it's an airline credit card and those, man, you, sometimes it's worth paying the annual fee because you get free bags, but I haven't been flying that carrier, um, for the past few years. No reason, just places I've gone, they have not flown to. So that's beside the point. We're talking about finances. Um, so I have two papers here. Um, this is posh paper. 
um, from Live Love Posh. I'm not sure what is in stock or not or out of stock. I do know 2025 paper packs are going to be released soon, but this is the quad paper and then this is the checklist paper, which I've seen it side by side. It's actually a little bit of a different color. Interesting. Um, but I am an affiliate for Live Love Posh, so I will have my affiliate link and discount codes always are down in the description box. So the way I'm going to do this is I am going to, I'm going to divide this into sections, means we already have them. So I think we're going to have essential bills. And then we're gonna have other essentials. And what this means is essential bills are kind of, even though I'll put power on there or electricity on there, it's gonna be a bill that I get every single month <laughs> for things that I have to pay. I don't really have a choice about, I need, I need it. Um, it is an essential and usually for the most part it is pretty consistent with the exception of electricity other essentials are going to be the gas the groceries um car maintenance things like that so that is what i mean by those differentials um you'll see it as i start kind of writing things in and again this is just how i do things there may be a better way um but we'll see and then we're going to have a non-essential bills. So again, these are things that are either taken out annually for the whole year or monthly. And these are <laughs> typically reoccurring expenses. Um, even if they're annual, they're going to renew. Um, that I could get rid of if I really wanted to. These are more luxuries. Um, you know, your streaming services and things like that. And then we're going to have other semi-essential expenses. So I don't want to call these non-essentials. I don't really want to call these essentials. But I'll call these semi-essentials. And this will be like clothing and things like that. Because as an adult, I don't really need as much clothing as like a kid needs because they're outgrowing them. I have an abundance of clothes. And as someone who no longer goes into the office five days a week, I have a hybrid schedule. I have plenty of clothes. I don't have, need to really go out and buy more clothes. Um, so that would be a semi-essential. It's stuff that um, I really would call it frivolous, but it could kind of teeter on that frivolous spending if you're buying stuff that you don't really need. Um, there are going to be some other categories I think I'm going to put in the back. Well, we'll just say um, maybe emergency funds. And then I think this is where it gets interesting. I think I'm going to do potential <laughs> we'll say potential non-essential um, subscription so everything on this page are phantom expenses <laughs> that's what we're going to call them phantom expenses this would be kind of where cash stuffing, if you were cash stuffing an envelope, would come into place. That's what this is going to be. It's like, I know myself and I know I'm eventually going to want to order like another subscription, whether it be like an annual subscription, a quarterly subscription, or a monthly subscription. And I want to like have money set aside just in case I decide to do that. So those are going to be my phantom expenses. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill, I'm going to just write in my essential expenses. Um, like I said, these are going to be my monthly bills that they are not luxuries. <laughs> I pretty much have to pay these to survive. All right, so I have my essential bills down. I did put my car insurance here, and this is way more than what I actually paid for my car insurance. 
but I recently switched carriers, which apparently you should do quite frequently because that's how you get the best rates. <laughs> um, I will say, just because we're talking about finances, I have been with the same auto insurance carrier for five or six years, if not a little bit longer, and I have them with home and auto. And last year, I paid close to $900 for the entire year for auto, for auto insurance for one car. And this year, it jumps up to almost $1,400. $1,400 for a whole year. <laughs> I was like, what happened? So, like, I called to make sure my coverage was the same um, and, like, something didn't, like, lapse. Like, you know, my good driver coverage or my low mileage or whatever and everything had remained the same but apparently and this is probably not just for my state but a lot of states have like allowed for an increase in insurance rates so like premiums have skyrocketed but my premium skyrocketed like four hundred dollars it might have been 13 something so we'll just say like 450 dollars is how much my premium skyrocketed with nothing i have never had a claim since I've had it for auto or home. I've never had an insurance claim and it went up $450. I'm like, that's ridiculous. So I switched carriers and I do know that this like discount is probably going to be short lived, but the carrier only offers six months, which I hate. I'd rather do the whole year, especially find a good rate. <laughs> and I paid in full and it was like $360 <laughs> for six months. <laughs> Whereas if you were to divide the like the 1350 or whatever my annual rate would have been. I mean, that is like almost $700 a month. So like I literally saved like $350 on car insurance. That's my little plug because we're talking about finances. But because of the huge fluctuations, I'm just going to pencil in $80 as an estimates for car insurance. Um, because I, you know, either will be sticking with my current one when it comes up for renewal in March, or I will be switching again. I probably need to look at my homeowner's coverage too, just so I can get them all under one umbrella. But yeah, so I'm just penciling that in. Power, now my electricity bill for um, October and November is going to be pretty low. But the problem is December, it gets pretty high. And everything has pretty much gone up 20 bucks this year with the exception of a few months but for the most part it seems like it kind of went up a little bit so I'm just going to estimate that everything is going up but I want it to put in kind of the highest amount so I just did 120 again that's a very high estimate um, for October and November but I would rather have that buffer than not have the buffer so this is kind of over if even if I average that out and divide it by three this is still over that but it's fine. Um, I'm not going to put like my actual income on here, but I have that off to the side. So I'm kind of keeping a tally and I, I do have enough room in my actual income to have those buffers. Now the fun part. No, this is not fun. Um, now we're going to talk about groceries. Gas. Um, we'll say car. But that's more like oil change. So it's more like cheap stuff. I will, oil changes aren't cheap, but I'm not talking about like a $2,000 auto repair. I'm thinking more of your just routine maintenance type thing. But it's mainly going to be oil. An oil change. Um, we'll do health care and RX. Maybe we'll have an extra one, which is like over-the-counter type RX stuff. Um, home. I think that might be it. Okay. Groceries. October probably is not going to be that bad of a month as far as groceries, but if I'm kind of like figuring this stuff out for the next three months, for the next quarter... November and December, maybe, for a few reasons. First of all, there are a lot of holidays in there, so that means, like, holiday cooking, but it also means 
um, holiday time off, which also probably means a little bit more cooking just because you have more freedom and more time to, to do that stuff. So I actually may, I think 250 is usually a good spot for groceries. I'm going to up that to 300, especially because prices are going up again. So I'm going to just say 300. That's probably an overestimation, but that can also include when I, a lot of times when I budget for groceries, I do um, pick up other things at the grocery store. <laughs> you know, like, you know, if you need um, Ziploc bags or something like that. So, and then gas. Um, I'm going to just say 75 because in September I spent 50. So right now I'm filling up my gas tank maybe twice. And I would say at most it will be three times, like every week and a half if I'm driving regularly. Um, but with teleworking, probably not gonna happen. So for a car and oil change, again, this is, I'm thinking of, I do oil changes. I honestly, with as few and far, <laughs> as few miles as I have been driving, I don't even need to get it done every six months. Um, but we'll, we'll add a little bit more money because that would be like 25 bucks a month, I guess, but we'll add a little bit more. Maybe I'll budget 50. And then health and prescription, I would typically budget a lot for this. I would probably have budgeted close to like 75 to a hundred dollars, but I currently have enough money and flex spending, which should get me through to the end of the year. So this is like a category that will change come the first of the year, probably, um, as my flex spending starts getting lower and lower. And I have like a medical flex spending accounts with my work. So I like say I want, I think I did like a thousand dollars into my flex spending account. I get a credit card right when that starts it has a thousand dollars already on it. And then they take, um, a certain amount out of my paycheck, each paycheck. Um, so that way that thousand dollars is taken out of my paycheck pre-tax from July 1, 2024 through June 30th, 2025. Um, so <clears throat> it actually ends up saving you money because it's pre-tax. <laughs> so I do that and it is great. It is so good, but I do have a pretty hefty expense that came out or that will be coming out. That's going to eat up a whole lot of that. So I'm still going to just maybe put aside $40. Um, like I said, it's probably going to be zero, but I'm just, I like to overestimate. And then I'm going to put an arrow for increase because that may go up for the next quarter. Over the counter, I'm just going to do 20. And that's like Tylenol, <laughs> um, Motrin, stuff like that. And then home. I have to actually think about this because there's things that I need for my home. This quarter, I know right off the bat. I do need to reorder filters for my AR unit. I need to order a refrigerator filters and refrigerated water filters and air filters for my, that I probably need to do a microwave filter too. Um, and those all come in like bundles. <laughs> so you're not just buying one. You could, but then it's a waste of money. Um, so I think I'm going to do 75 because then that'll be like 225 and I don't think I need anything that's major for home repairs. I'll put that. Maybe here. So I think that's it. So now I have to do my math in my head for this one. Y'all, I think my math, I'm, I'm impressed with my, 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 everything in my head right now. I did all that in my head. So that's $560 for my other kind of essentials. Um, yeah, I think that's enough. Because even if I start thinking about like with my groceries being like a little bit more than what I usually do in the home being what it is, that should cover anything like garbage bags, which I have a gazillion. So I should be fine with that. Leaf bags, maybe. 
I might have a gazillion of those too. I have to find out. All right. Now here is the fun part. That wasn't the fun part. The fun part is going to be all of my non-essentials. <laughs> non-essential bills. I'm going to write all of this down so I can think on it and then we'll go over it and you will see how much crap I subscribe to. All right. So my non-essential bills. Here's where it gets a little tricky. A lot of these I pay annually. So again, I am just kind of budgeting for those annual costs when they hit, which a lot of them are going to hit soon. Um, but I like to still just go ahead and budget. I have enough money to cover it if they do hit soon uh, in November. But I still want to kind of keep this going because... This is going to be my reference because um, I won't pay for it if I didn't have the money to do it, but I should be able to pay annually. You just get a lot bigger of a discount. Sometimes you aren't given a discount unless you do it annually. So like Hulu, Walmart Plus, and Peacock, all I purchased in 2023 during Black Friday sales. So I get Hulu plus Disney Plus for $3.98 a month. Um, that is not going to renew because if it renews, it's going to be like $13 a month. Um, I don't really watch it enough, but I would still like to have it. So this would be something that if I can find another Black Friday price, which I usually do have decent Black Friday prices, then I will sign up again. Um, but that is still kind of in limbo. Like if I can, if they have it, whatever. Um, so there's the one. Then we have Walmart Plus. Um, that is not an essential. That's something, the reason why I do that is again around the 1st of November because Walmart has their like Black Friday special that starts like the second week of November. Um, they have 40, they had been doing, of course, it's all subject to change as prices increase. They have been doing like $49 if you do an annual Walmart Plus subscription. And even though I really don't utilize their shipping because you get like two day shipping, which is like equivalent to prime. However, or sometimes same day shipping, it will come to the store and be delivered to you. That, I've done that a couple of times. That was amazing. But you get Paramount Plus, um, which I really don't use, but I let my parents use it. <laughs> um, and like Paramount Plus will cost you unless you get a super good deal, probably 40 to $50 for the year. So right then and there, that covers the cost of Walmart Plus. And then I've gotten like free months for Peloton and they just have a lot of different stuff you get. So I would probably subscribe to that if I can somehow get the $49 deal. Um, and that would be an annual one. Peacock is another one where I like Peacock but I don't know if I would do it annually again unless I can get a good deal. I think I did it $40 for the year in 2023 in November. So if they offer something like that again, then I'll do that. But I've already canceled it, so I won't auto renew. The only thing I have left to cancel is Hulu because that's month to month. Um, so I have to wait until the end of October to cancel that. But Walmart and Peacock, I've already canceled it, so I won't auto renew, but I would love to re-sign up if they have Black Friday deals. So I'm just budgeting for that for that now, just in case. Although those will probably be like $100 at one time, but I should have enough already buffered for that. Um, Amazon is another annual one, but that's, um, that's about 12 bucks a month because I think it's $140 a year. Peloton... I actually only pay $12.99 a month, but I want to budget for $25 a month because I'm going to upgrade to the $25 a month plan probably pretty soon. Probably in December, might wait until January, but if I go ahead and budget for it, it's fine. Um, just because there's like a difference of you can have a lot more of their equipment related classes, like rowing, spin, and stuff like that. And I do have a regular non-Peloton equipment and you are allowed unlimited classes. So I want to get back into that. Les Mills, I do that annually for like $90 a year. So that's about $7.50 a month. That's not until the spring. Um, American Express, um, again, that's $99 a year. So about $8.25. And then BJ's, the big box store, uh, that's coming up in December. I have to think about that one. 
Um, cause that's expensive. It's like $119. Um, what I might do is get my dad to do it as a new member. And then that would save money because me and him usually share anyway. Um, cause you get like two memberships and they never go. They just use it for gas. Um, so yeah, that's $95 for all of my streaming and things like that. So yeah, I think that's it for that. Now, like looking at this now, I don't have a telephone bill because I'm still on my parents' plan. Yes, yes, yes. I am not a spring chicken, but I've never gotten off my parents' plan. So, <laughs> all right. So my semi-essential expenses, we're going to have clothing, hair, because I do have to get my hair highlighted. Um, I really only get it twice a year, but... So clothing, hair, we're going to say, do you call it like self-care? And I guess I'll say beauty items. I don't really buy that much. I do buy like nail stickers and stuff like that. And then I think I'll do home. Because there are some things that I may have to purchase for the home going into the fall. Like, I don't know if I'm going to do mulch now or just wait till the spring, but things like that is what I'm thinking of. So clothing, I don't really need a lot of clothing. So I'm going to do a low clothing budget. I have enough to get me through probably the winter. I have enough sweaters, sweatshirts, jeans, good to go. So we're going to leave it there. Hair, um, I could probably really do 25 a month. Although I think I'm going in an extra time this month. Let's do 35 a month for hair. Self-care, all right, so what I'm thinking for this, I think I'm going to do $80 for a massage that I may or may not get, but I would like to budget for it um, because that is going to greatly impact how much money I have left for my frivolous spending, and I want to budget for a massage. Um, there is a new hand in stone opening up near me. And apparently, if you do the membership, which is $80 a month, you get a free massage, plus you get free add-ons. So, I may do that, but I need to look into if any places will actually cover my massage with my insurance, like any chiropractor. So, I need to do more research for that. Beauty, um, I don't really spend that much. We'll say $25. Home... I think let's do another 35 and then that should put us pretty close to even because that'll be 70, 95, 175 plus 75. So that's 250. I'm sure I'm missing some stuff, but I think I have enough of a buffer that even if I'm missing some stuff, it should be okay. All right, now we're going to go to emergency funds. I'm not going to have that much for emergency funds. I think I'm going to do car health, which probably doesn't need to be that much. And then home. Those are really all I need for that. Um, health, I think we'll just do 25. Home. I'll do $50 a month. Car, I'll do $25. So that's $100. I know that sounds low, but like most of the stuff will be covered. Like for health right now, everything, like I said, is still covered by flex spending and my co-payments and stuff are fairly low that that'll still be covered under flex spending. So I really shouldn't have to do any for my emergency funds for health. My car, again, I'm not really having very many issues, knock on wood. Um, so I just need to put money aside. So the $25, hopefully a month, um, could cover some of that. That's not really enough, but I also have a lifetime warranty. So if it's any major repairs, then hopefully, again, that would be covered by a copayment. And then home, this is more for um, home projects that may come up. So it's not really an emergency fund. This is kind of emergency fund plus like a project. 
And then here is the other fun one. These are phantom payments. <laughs> These are subscriptions that I've had and I've paid for. And I don't think I'm going to renew them because it was like a one-time luxury. But I might, or I might want something similar because I really like subscription boxes. So I want to have a placeholder for it. So like, like the first one is like Fab Fit Fun. Like I've already paid for my annual subscription. I don't know that I'm going to renew an annual subscription again because I feel like it's nice to like do it for a year, take a break for a year, come back for a year. So it doesn't like get old. It stays fun. <laughs> um, so for that, I am still going to budget $21 a month. Even though I pay annually, I'm still just going to budget for that in case I decide to do it. Then we're going to talk about, I like craft subscriptions. Um, like I've done a few Archer and Olive subscription boxes. After taxes, they're about like $90 a quarter. Again, I cancel it so I don't have a reoccurring, re reoccurring charge. But that can add up. Um, I've done quite a few. Um, I have two subscriptions for Notique. I have their Fashion and Ink, which is their cheaper of the two. I believe that one is $75 um, a quarter. I've purchased it annually, so it equals to like $62. That one I may very well renew. Um, and then I did their luxury one, which I, the name slips my mind. That was a lot more expensive. <laughs> that one is about $600 for the year. It's a quarterly box, but I paid for it for the year. But when I pay for it, there was like a 20% off coupon. So it was like $520 or something like that. $525, I think is what I ended up paying for it. And, um, but like, I already know it's coming. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that, that fits for that. So Basically, because of my love for subscription boxes for craft ones, I'm going to budget $50 a month. I usually don't do monthly, so then that would give me $150 a quarter to play with for subscription boxes. I do sometimes do like a Allure, Allure Beauty Box, and that is $25 a month, but I usually only do that every so often too. So I'm budgeting $25 a month, but I probably won't do it. Although I did see a deal on my American Express. I will get $10 back if I do an Allure Beauty Box. So <clears throat> I might actually do one because it'll be $15. And then let's do Canva. I don't know if I'm going to do Canva, but I want to budget for it. I'm probably not going to be doing it in October, but I probably will be doing it in December. I think that's gone up to like that's not going on to like $14 or something. We'll just say 15 because I don't remember how much it is right now. Um, and then video editing. I might switch softwares. I have an annual right now with InShot. I think that's like with $17.99 for an annual. You could have did a lifetime. So I might do that because um, it's like $35 or it was. Um, I don't know if it is anymore. But I might, I don't know. So what I might do here is like budget like eight bucks a month. And then we'll just say other AGWP. This is like a, a one that I just want to kind of keep out there. And we'll do $12. So that way the eight and that'll make it 20. It'll be better for my math. And then I think I want to have... A placeholder for another streaming service just in case of $15 and then I'll just add these up all right so I'm coming up with 136 but I think I'm gonna do 150 so the math isn't gonna add up there I just want to kind of again add in a little buffer so these are phantom expenses so this should up when we come up with what I actually have left to spend because a lot of that stuff will come from these phantom expenses. So I'm going to bust out everything and put it right here. All right. So there we go. That is pretty much my budget as far as things like that. Now, there are a few things that I need to take into consideration that were not taken into consideration here. Because tis the season. 
<laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Do I have a checklist? Yes. So the other thing I'm going to do, I'm not sure that I would have to do this like in the first quarter for January, February, and March. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at some of those other expenses that I have. And I'm going to try to write like an overall budget of how much I want to do. And then I'm going to try to make that to be zero. So looking at this, I pretty much have, so I would want to stay under $600, preferably less, so that way more can go to savings for the month. And like all this, if I don't use it, it goes like, this. I look at every month and look at what's left over and then that goes to savings. So the goal is not to use all of this money, but I want to make sure that I'm only spending what I have and not having to put stuff on credit cards that accrue interest. That is the goal. So the categories that I want to like use that $600 for are crafts. And that is also planners, planners, crafts. I call it crafts because I've been buying stamps and things like that for like junk journaling or just creative journaling and planner. It's, it's everything. It's everything paper crafting related. Um, and then we'll say social. We'll say gifts. I'm going to do hobby and that's going to be other hobbies other than crafts. And then we'll just have miscellaneous, which is kind of like an other. Okay, I'm going to start with gifts because this one actually shouldn't be that hard. <laughs> when you're not in a relationship and you don't have kids, you don't really have to spend that much money come the holidays. Um, I have actually, I already have some purchases, but I still need to buy gifts for my parents um, and maybe like pick up a few other things. So over the course of the next three months, I do need to budget for that. So I would say maybe let's do like 166 a month for gifts. <laughs> and I'm doing all this in my head all on slash a piece of paper next to me. So now I have $434 left over. All right, so then we're gonna come to fun and social. How about we do 100? Hobbies, oh, I don't really have much else other than what I'm doing for crafts. So let's just do 25 there. That's stuff like, re like if I wanna buy a new book to read, which I really don't need to do it, but that's what that is. All right. So now I'm at, so now, okay, I'm at 309. Four crafts. <laughs> I don't want to spend any money for crafts in October. Looking at it, I realistically have purchased everything that I need um, until Black Friday. Anything that I don't have can wait until Black Friday. I think I would hate to purchase something and then see it go on sale. So I feel like it's going to be fairly easy. Um, like I just went to Michael's and they had like happy planners for like seven bucks. I did not buy any. I just don't need them. Um, so I think I can be good. So if I budget a hundred dollars, and I don't spend it this month, then that would give me $200 for Black Friday. So I think I'm going to stay at 100 And then, y'all, that would give me 209 left over. Like, that's really good. And, like, I really want to stay within this for this stuff. Like, I just because I have the 209 left over... I don't want to say, oh, I have 209. So I'm not really trying to balance it out. I'm balancing it to zero by creating this miscellaneous category. But like social, I kind of want to do that as more activities. And then the miscellaneous can be like um, dinners with friends, things like that. So I think we're good. I think we are good. And I think that pretty much sums it up. So we'll see 
how things go. I'm thinking November is going to be pretty similar to this. Um, when December rolls around, I might not actually need as much money because like if I've already done all my Christmas shopping and was under budget, then I'm good. I'm good to go. Um, the only thing I guess November, it would be the miscellaneous budget would be like a Black Friday budget. Um, right now, I don't think there's any big purchases I need to make come Black Friday. Like, I don't think I need a new TV or a new computer or anything like that. Like, I've been tempted to get like, you know, a, um, a Mac just so that way I would like chat with my, um, all of my Apple products, but I don't need it and I'd rather just wait. So we'll see. But I think that's it. I think that's it for my like kind of finance breakdown. This was not, I know, a super like fun video probably to watch, but maybe it kind of gave you guys some ideas. I just want to kind of show you how I budget as a non-budgeter or how I track my expenses. Um, very rarely, like I said, I'm probably only going to do this every quarter. Um, just because for the most part, um, I don't know. I might go off and not do, I might do January, February, and then do March, April, May, lump them three in together. So I might just do two months for the beginning of the year. And then that'll kind of put me on a track of having all my spring months together, all of my um, summer months together, because I feel like spending kind of stays consistent by season, which isn't necessarily by quarter. So, but right now, because I am starting this, when I'm starting this, we're going to do it by quarter. Um, and I think I have a good grasp on things. Like I said, these are phantom expenses. These are kind of phantom expenses, meaning that they may just stay in my bank account for the month. And if they are, they will likely get transferred to a savings account at the end of the month. So that way, at least I can accrue some interest, right? So these will kind of go into it. So it's kind of almost like um, envelope, <laughs> like I said, like cash envelopes, but I'm actually putting it into my savings account to hopefully accrue a little bit of interest. Not that much, but you know, somewhat. So yeah, there we go. That is my like t quarter four kind of finance tracking, budgeting, whatever you want to call it. Um, don't expect to see too many of these videos on my channel. I just knew I had to sit down and do it. It was one of my goals for the month of September. So I figured let's just film it and see if it can help anybody else. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Um, but regardless, I do hope you got something out of it. And if you did, please press that like button. And if you have yet to subscribe, I hope you would consider subscribing. That is all I have for now. I hope you have a good rest of your day, evening or night. Until next time. Bye. Bye.